Welcome to the Lake District National Park, one of my all time favourite places here in the UK. We are here for one day and one day only because we've got some meetings in the area, but it is just insane how well we have timed this. It's a beautiful Thursday, the weather is glorious, the autumnal, co autumnal colours are coming through. We're here with Bobby, here with Anna. <laughs> And we are parked in Hawkshead. We're going to do a little um, shore walk along Windermere, uh, the largest lake, freshwater lake in the UK. Um, and it's about 10 and a half miles we're going to do. I haven't actually read up on it very much. We got here really quite late last night. Um, and it's, you know, this morning she's been packing and getting the car and drive here. Um, so just really, really ex so excited. My favorite, favorite, favorite place. And uh, I just cannot wait to walk with you today. So let's get some boots on. Bobby is not hugely keen to be walking. Um, it's funny how I've ended up with a dog that just doesn't like the outdoors, but there we go. Uh, we'll, we'll make the best of that and probably carry him a little bit. If he's a good lad, he'll follow along and uh, hopefully you guys will too. Let's go. We headed out north from the car park and on along the road to Pool Bridge, but soon realised we had to turn back as we'd forgotten something. It was as we walked that we received a life-changing phone call. You too. Bye. Bye. We have a house. <laughs> we, we have, have a house. house. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that is so cool. They went with us. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Don't you lay district is a magic <laughs> place. <laughs> oh man. So we have a house. Um, we just got a phone call from the letting agent. We have spent the last however many months trying to find somewhere to live. With COVID and everything, it's been carnage. We've lived in tree houses, <laughs> in tents, out of the car for two months. And we've just had a phone call saying we have got the house we went to view the other day. We have somewhere to live. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Bobby, we Bobby. are not homeless anymore. We have a house, we're not homeless anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, great, does that mean I don't have to walk today? <laughs> great. <laughs> All right, let's pack up <laughs> the mess of dumping everything. We had the phone call. It's the agent, it's the agent. We need to pick up. <laughs> All right, we are moving, which is so good. I'm ready to take on this walk. This is the book we're using. So I absolutely love these Lake District books by Cicerone. Um, the high level one, I've ticked off almost every walk. And I really wanted to try and do some in the lower level uh, route book because I'm hoping next year, 2021, to run different walks and workshops up here in the lakes, try and make it accessible for people. Um, so sort of scouting out different routes, and today is one of those routes. Oh, oh, you lost the dog. Oh. <laughs> Come on, chicken! <laughs> As we began our walk for a second time, we headed back over Pool Bridge and then followed a road up to Colt House. <laughs> Here we are, this is our little road, signed Ray, W-R-A-Y. See this here, we have a sign, so Colt House, the little hamlet, just walking along the road, and then we're gonna turn off along our footpath. As expected, Colt House was a tiny place, so we quickly passed on through and pressed on towards our footpath okay. that would take us off the road and into the hills. It's amazing the temperature difference in the shade. It is like, whoo, my icy winter. So we've got Gilbank House here, the rather grandiose looking gated entrance. And then right back on ourselves, we've got deer fence, massive deer fence, I mean. And I'm not small, but that is tall. All right. <laughs> yeah, it was taller than Anna. It's safe, it's okay. Um, so it's signed um, Belle Grange and the Sauries. In, uh, pronunciation. Great. I'm still struggling to know which country we're in right now. <laughs> Servus. Um, Servus. <laughs> Thank you. Come Bob. Dankeschön. Dankeschön. Bitte. <laughs> we followed a well-worn trail with occasional views over the surrounding fells and then on under deciduous trees 
showing autumnal hints of colour of orange and yellow. It really is perfect Lake District weather today. We could have gone up high, made the most of the clear skies and good views, but actually sometimes it's nice to stay low and immerse yourselves in the valleys, in the trees and the flora as you get as you get up higher leave the tree line behind it's a bit more rugged a bit more exposed and uh this is something i don't do very often when i'm here it's usually bombing about trying to get many peaks in as possible which has its time and place but today is not one of those days especially not with this one <laughs> exactly words right out of my mouth the little bean is not so keen <laughs> but it's okay <laughs> we're looking after him we have the bean bag in the rucksack full of all his treats <laughs> and we have a sling in case we need to carry him. He is 12 now, his arthritis isn't the best, um, but he's a good lad. We have a sign. Was it helpful? So you see here, far sorry, two and a half miles. So we're heading along this forest track now with the bean and with Anna. Thankfully not lost them so far. So we've got two tarns we go past today within this forested area. Um, and just really looking forward to that. I find tarns very tranquil, special places. They're very reflective uh, spaces for me, whether you know, you're know you up on haystacks or um, angle tarn wherever it is just all the tarns have special <laughs> special places in my heart because different memories and, and thought processes and learnings that i've gone through with them but um i was just talking to anna it's sort of a day of mixed emotions so we've just had the good news about the house about the property we have somewhere to live but also i'm just feeling very emotionally <laughs> unsettled and sad and cry <laughs> because um there you go. <laughs> uh, on the 19th of June, so two days after my birthday, um, uh, Penny passed away. Um, our Westie, and she grew up in the lakes with us um, as kids. We were here every year, multiple times, just doing different walks, playing in the lakes again having picnics by the tarns and she loved it and I promised her in well beginning of this year that I would get her here one last time she was 15 when she passed away and I wasn't there and we didn't get to the lakes because of covid and just really finding it very hard to process that and sort of since she's passed away you know we've had a very unsettled living setup situation I mentioned earlier we've been sort of all different places I mean we haven't done a yurt yet but <laughs> there's still time otherwise <laughs> yeah um and it's just it's it's been very hard to process that she's gone and everything reminds me of her and even though we're here for just the one day it's just very hard um imagining how she would be she would be so happy she couldn't walk very far but she would love it and I would love it and just I wish that it happened but it hasn't and yeah just trying to work through that and and sit with the memories that we do have or i do have of our time here but i don't think i'll ever really get over the fact that she's gone um because she was just such a characterful loving enthusiastic dog and helped me get out when i was struggling and when she was struggling with her arthritis or whatever it was um she always still wanted to be outside and we just She's just a very special dog. <laughs> so just feeling feeling all of that today as we as we do this walk. <laughs> the track was broad and made for easy walking, with bird song all around and bodies of water glistening in the morning sunlight. We were now well within the Clay Heights upland region, made up of forestry tracks and open common ground walking. Okay, so we've left the woods now and come out into this open space so typical of the Lake District. Now the lakes was actually designated as a national park in 1951, made into a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2017. There's 21 large bodies of water. Uh, Windermere, which we're going to be walking down towards, or we are walking down towards at the moment, is just one of them. 
Um, it's famous for its sheep, it's famous for its tarns. It is just a very much loved, much visited place here in the UK. So treasured by the nation. Um, and we're actually heading down to Wise Ian Tarn. I think that's how you pronounce it. E E N. Ian. Ian. <laughs> Something like that. Um, so there's a couple of tarns on today's walk, as I mentioned. And this is just one of them tucked away here in this uh, open common space. Just look, how can you not fall in love with that? I can see what's happening. What? And they don't have a clue. Who? They fall in love and here's, here's the, the bottom, bottom line. Our, Our trio's trio down, down to two. To two. Oh. oh. The, <laughs> the sweet, sweet caress, caress of, of that. Light. What? Leg light? <laughs> magic everywhere. <laughs> and with all this romantic atmosphere. Disasters <laughs> in the air! Officially the master of that section. <laughs> Once we eventually stopped singing, standing on the edge of the tarn was blissfully tranquil. There were superb views over the Langdale Pikes, Crinkle Crags and Bow Fell. And to be honest, I wanted to fall on my knees in awe of the beauty. This was the Lake District at its very best. Lake District sheep, my favourite sheep. Can you have a favourite sheep breed? Yes, yes you can. And it is these guys. Herdwick sheep are native to the lakes and are prized for their robust health and their ability to live solely on the food that they forage. Heading away from the tarn now, just that backdrop, just still can't quite words comprehend the beauty of it all. Um, so we're heading on to the next tarn now. See which way is Bobby gonna go? Yeah. Oops! Come on, Bob! Oh, chicken! It's a bit wild for you. <laughs> um, meanwhile, <laughs> what happened, Anna? Nothing. Just did you? Just, is your foot wet? Muddy. Or did it? Did you get out quick enough? I, it's getting a bit damp. I think. <laughs> Oops! Oopsie! It happens. <laughs> it was only a short walk to the next tarn, along a clear and rugged track through open common land with curious cows either side. Just up ahead, we can see the glistening water of Moss Echoes Tarn. So this tarn is quite special for Beatrix Potter's fans because she, it, she bought the tarn in 1913 and her and her husband had a boat here. Um, anyway, <laughs> talking of special things, <laughs> um, this is also a triple S ice site, a special scientific interest, um, famous for it or protected for its, its wildlife, the, most notably the dragonflies and the damselflies. So it's a bit late in the season to see some, but we'll keep our eye open anyway. The tarn is now owned by the National Trust after Beatrix Potter donated the plot when she passed away. It has a surface area of around five acres and Alfred Wainwright called it the most attractive tarn on the Clave Heights. It was easy to see why, with leaves gently rustling in the breeze and swans delicately paddling their way across the surface. Bad enough that one way is so long. evade wet feet at all costs. That's Bobby. <laughs> I've not seen the gorse this year because spring we weren't able to get out due to Covid and then this season we've been uh, out and about. So gorse has two flowering seasons, it's this sort of very spiky yellow plant um, you get it all over the coast southwest coast path in particular where i spend a lot of time um, and it's got a very coconutty smell you can actually also eat the flowers i've done that on so many videos and spat it out but i'm not going to do it now i'll save the flowers some life but um it's just so nice because you know when they come out in spring and this half in the second half of the year um they just bring this splash of color on an otherwise potentially rainy day just very very good plants and loved by the bees and the wasps i have to say all right then <laughs> mountain bikers versus walkers walkers get out the way <laughs> it is it's sort of a headless chicken moment when you hear them coming <laughs> 
We were soon walking along Wilfin Beck, which was bubbling along in the sunshine, and certainly would have been a good spot for a picnic. Did you do it? Let me off this bridge, quick. Here we go. So we dropped down to the collection of houses that make up Far Story. Um, and we're just gonna walk past the pub. Unfortunately, just past it. And then we'll loop round and then drop down to Windermere itself. There's the Cuckoo Brow Inn. Actually smells really good. <laughs> Even Bobby's wiggling his nose. <sighs> to be honest, we didn't see much of Far Stories as it was just a collection of houses and we were soon heading northeast along a track that would take us to the shores of Windermere. We have a sign, always very helpful. So Windermere, the lakeshore, three quarters of a mile. So we'd be there and then we will find the snack spot. We decided to not stop at the tarn just because it was a little early and also quite, quite damp underfoot there. Slightly damp. <laughs> so we're heading to the, <laughs> to the main lake in the hope that we can find a nice rock to perch on. <laughs> Hi. I leave the gate open for you guys. Thanks, yes. Well, this is the place to be, apparently. <laughs> this stretch of path in the whole lake district. Yeah. <laughs> we are here. We're on the shores of Windermere and it's very much lunchtime. We're all a bit hungry. Bobby seems to be famished. <laughs> He's eating everything. Uh, so this lake is, is hugely visited by, by, by tourists, by people, um, and it's really easy to see why it's stunning. It's really beautiful. You can, you can go on the boat, you can own boats here, you can paddle on it. It's, it's just stunning. Um, and it's somewhere I haven't been for a while because I don't usually come to this part of the lake district, so it's a bit of a treat. Uh, so basically our walk is just going to follow this shore for a couple of miles and then we head back up to the high point of, of today's walk, but that will be revealed later. Um, and meanwhile, we're going to eat all the food because we really are quite hungry. Yeah. Windermere is actually a ribbon lake, formed in a glacial trough after the retreat of the ice at the start of the current interglacial period. That made little difference to us though, and we had a blast feeding the ducks and of course the little bean. Okay. Nom 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 nom. <laughs> Thanks. That's great. We ate all the food and now we are off because it's cold. Even I'm cold. That shows how cold it is. Um, <laughs> Bobby has his coat back on. I have a coat and Anna has a jacket back on. Windermere's wildlife. Look and listen for some of the species that wake Mindu is special. Tufted ducks. Those are funny words. <laughs> Pot, pot, potchards and the otter. I didn't know there were otters here. That's cool. We pressed on along the lakeside path through Heel Wood and Bellow Grange, with occasional views out over the lake itself. It was always lovely to see people out and about enjoying nature, and nature out and about enjoying nature. Yeah. Woodland on the west shore. The landscape we see today may look natural, but it has in fact been shaped over many centuries by the people who have lived and worked here. The woodlands were an important resource for the local iron leather and bobbin making industries, as well as providing timber and firewood. You can see trees to be coppiced, so cut back at ground level, cut close to the base when they're coppiced. Um, the shoots go through in spring, and then several years later, you get more shoots coming through and the tree grows bigger and bushier, so you get more um, stems, which you can use for, as it says here, the iron leather and bobbin making industry, or fences, or nowadays it's bean poles. All right, so we can actually continue along the shore and then turn up um, to get to Latterbury, which is where we're headed for now. But we decided to follow this road, just to sort of cut off a little bit, because the day is, um, certainly in its second half right now. Uh, so that's our next goal, Latter Barrow. We're gonna climb up to just over 200 meters above sea level. So nothing spectacularly high, but still should open up the opportunity to enjoy some jolly good views over Windermere and the surrounding fells. To get to Latter Barrow, we followed a road past High Ray Farm with jaw dropping views towards Fairfield and Dove Crag. I couldn't help but stop and stare in awe and wonder. 
My gosh, how I love the Lake District. So we've come up this road. This is highway now. Just jumping on the, the road again and then we'll cut off up to Latterborough. Noise place. Hawkshead, generally a good when you see a sign for the place where you want to go. <laughs> Here's the turn off and we're heading to base camp. Not Everest base camp, unfortunately, but High Ray base camp, National Trust base camp. What does base camp mean? I don't actually know. Is it like the HQ office or something like that? I guess we're <laughs> gonna find out. This is where the operations are all sussed out, you know. Pew, pew, pew. It's halfway up 245 meters. So yeah, I mean, no one's gonna walk that high, right? No, not in a no. wanna. So secret. Please, I mean, you can't even adjust to altitude. There. <laughs> Apparently the base camp is in there. Base camp bunker, we don't really know, but we are not gonna take the risk of exploring and continue on our humble walk. <laughs> Even though it's like, stop, but it's just forestry. <laughs> oh look, it's a hole just big enough for the beam. <laughs> and enough steps that we can climb. Oops. <laughs> it's very hard to film at the same time. No, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Bobby come here. Come there's, a, there's a special bob come gate. Here. Come here. See there. See there. Here, boy. Here, boy. It's okay. Come on, it's okay. Yay! <laughs> she was a bit scared. Oh, good boy. Can you go across this? <laughs> Heading up through the trees, pretty soon we'll break out to open ground. Thanks. Uh, and there's window. I've switched to the DJI because my GoPro has died, it's run out of batteries. And for some reason, despite charging them, they still have no charge. So that's a shame. Eating up five batteries, but still, we have a nice wide angle lens, and still, we have a good view, and still, we have a lazy dog. No, he's not lazy actually, just <laughs> tired. It was beginning to cloud over as the ground underfoot leveled out and we couldn't help but stop to look back over our surroundings. Even Bobby was appreciating them. Now that has to say something. The view is opening up. The sky looks impressive as well. And here is the massive obelisk that marks the top of Latterbury. Well, we're not quite there yet, but we will be. There is the massive obelisk that marks the top of Latterbury. <laughs> And here we are at the mass of a list. That marks the top, the top of, of a last man. Boom. Man. <laughs> oh man. All around us was 360 views over the Coniston Fells, Bowfell, the Langdale Pikes, Fairfield, the South Eastern Fells, the Howgills, and the Pennines. It really couldn't have been a better way to begin to round up the day. And ahead, we could just about see Hawk's head too. Obelisk number two. Look at this. <laughs> a bit precarious. Someone's built a can, a spiky can. The weather is really changing actually, it's uh, clouded over, getting quite cool, um, even I'm questioning if I should put my jacket back on. On and off it's been today, generally shows the seasons are changing. <laughs> but we're dropping down towards Hogshead now, so really not far to go. Um, just really enjoyed the variety of um, sort of terrain underfoot that this walk has had to offer. Really fantastic views and just feeling exceptionally blessed by 
the, the clear weather today. Absolute treat. Here we are. This is the road. I thought I heard some people coming down the path, just thought I'd come check you out, you know. Never can be too sure, strangers in these paths. You are. Yeah. I want to take You're a very pretty colour. Yeah. Actually, all of you are a very pretty colour. Our short walk on the road is done, and then all we've got left to do is to follow this sign <laughs> and the human <laughs> to Hawkshead with it. You're going to lead the way. Oh, thanks, Mike. <laughs> First animal, giraffe. Okay. First vehicle, car. Oh. First time. Oh no, you're okay. Oh, keen. Um, first piece of clothing. Um, my blue hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, Bob, we're nearly back. Can you see the village? Is that where the car is and all your dindins are? So great. Really? Are you coming in? Are we going there? I'm pretty excited about this. Over the river. Oh, look. Nice. <laughs> Here we are then. Hawk's head. We've made it. We've all made it. We've all made it. Even little bean. Eww. That's his longest walk in a while. So we're just going to head back to the car now. But that's it. The end of our walk. Our one single day in the Lake District. Your first day in the Lake District. Did yeah. you enjoy it? Very much so. But I think uh, I was very lucky with the weather anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, special yeah. place though. Yeah, and I'm sure many more adventures to come. Good views. Good views. Very good exactly. views. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Not a lot of um, wind in here. I thought there would be more. Yeah. 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 But that's all right. Again, excuse to come back another day. <laughs> yeah. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your adventures, whatever they may be. And until next time, from me, Anna, and the Bean. Stay, stay wild. wild. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Bye.